Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke, and today we're gonna go over one exercise that I use with everybody. I think I literally mean everybody that I coach. Um, it's called the left side lying, right glute max. So the glutes are generally underactive in people. The way that I want you to look at this exercise is we're trying to activate the right glute specifically. The body is asymmetrical. The left glute tends to be a little shorter and the right glute tends to be a little longer. It likes to, uh, that, you know, that imbalance shifts us over to the right side. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna give you four steps in a progression of exercises and you can kind of work through them. And I want you to pick the highest numbered one that you can do while feeling the right stuff, okay? And not feeling the wrong stuff. We'll get into that more. So. Uh, you might be more familiar with this exercise as known as a clamshell, um, but we're really going to modify it relative to how people normally do it. So I, I told you the name that I've used for it is the left sideline right glute max. Our first base level progression is actually going to start on your right side. So this is confusing. <laughs> um, essentially what we're trying to do is you're trying to shift the hips. You're trying to teach the hips to dissociate from the spine. So we're going to start on your right side because it tends to be a little bit easier this way. Uh, you're going to start with the knees bent up to 90 degrees, uh, hips bent to 90 degrees as well. And the first thing you're going to do here is you're just, you're laying on your side and you got to do a little hip tuck. So we're going to exhale and bring the belly button back towards the spine. And that will just round out your low back, give you a slight posterior pelvic tilt. If you crunch really hard or you're holding your breath to do it, then you're doing it too hard and it's not gonna work. So just slight belly button comes back. That's step one. Step two is you're gonna bring your left shoulder and left hip a little closer together. You should just feel a little muscle activity of your obliques on the left side. And then step three, the exercise is, this is just a hip shift. So we're going to pull the left knee back behind the right knee. I want you to try to keep the right leg as relaxed as possible and just pull the left knee back. Now I did another video on this exercise in particular. It's called the right side lying left adductor pullback, or you could call it a left hip shift. All I'm trying to do here is inhibit the muscles that prevent my right glute from turning on, specifically the right inner thigh, tends to be really active. So this variation might be the best thing you can do to activate your right glute, even though you're not trying to activate your right glute. The thing that shuts off the right glute is the right inner thigh, so we gotta shut that off. That is the most important part of this, even though this is a right glute activation exercise. Okay, so this is the first variation. I am gonna turn just for a second so, so you, you can see that my left knee is back maybe like two or three inches behind my right knee. If I try to go too far like this and my knee comes up off the other leg, then I'm shifting too much. I'm using the wrong muscles to do it. You should feel a little left inner thigh while you're doing this variation. That's progression number one, the right side lying, left hip shift. Progression number two is the same stuff. So I'm going to go through all the steps again. I get set up. My hips and knees are bent to 90 degrees. I exhale, bring the belly button back, and I crunch the uh, left hip up towards the left shoulder and the left shoulder down towards it. Then we do the hip shift again. Notice my left knee is behind my right knee. And progression number two is we're gonna now add pushing the right knee down into the ground. Doesn't look any different but the muscle activity is very different. So if you were getting a left inner thigh on the previous one, it might shut down a little bit, but I want you to try to hang on to it. And now as I push the right knee down into the ground, I should feel some right outer hip kind of buttock area turn on. We're just gonna hold there. And for all of these, I like to hold for three to five sets of five nasal breaths. So something like this. The cadence is really important here. Nice full exhale and pause. Every time I breathe in, I'm trying to take the air down into the hips. I say breathe into the butt. That's three.
Just checking to make sure my hips are still shifted. Feels good. Feel the glute. Last breath. And relax. I like to end on the inhale. So that's progression number two. I've added the push the right knee down. Progression number three. Now we're actually going to flip over. We're going to come over to the left sideline variations. It's going to start to look more like a clamshell. So if you remember, our first variation was just a hip shift. That's all we're going to do on this side now. It's just a little harder to get it while you're laying on your left side versus laying on your right side because of the internal asymmetry in your body, and we'll leave it at that. Now, um, similar idea, you're going to shift your hips in the same direction. So your knees are going to be offset the same way, but now I'm flipped over, so it's going to be, you're going to attack it differently. Uh, so I start laying on my side, exhale, belly button comes back, pull the left side up. You should feel the same kind of left oblique activity on that. And you'll notice my left hip and my left shoulder came closer together. My right side is nice and long. We're trying to inhibit that stuff, lengthen it. Now to get the shift, I am then going to push the right knee ahead of the left knee. Just slightly, same amount of shift. If I push too far, I'm gonna do the same thing with the left hip. I'm gonna throw myself out of position. I'm not gonna get the muscle activity that I'm looking for. So knees are stacked, belly button tucked, uh, left ab rainbow, uh, make a little tunnel under here for a toy train track. And then right knee goes forward and we're just gonna hold there. Now, if I just shift like this, you might still feel the left inner thigh, but remember that's kind of the point. We're trying to shut off the right inner thigh. So we're just gonna hold here again for five breaths. The breathing cadence is really important. That's why we're going through this together. really important that you breathe through your nose gently it's really important that you pause after your exhales and it's really important that when you inhale you're trying to breathe into your butt area pelvic floor helps out Okay, so those three variations, uh, the two right sideline ones and the left sideline just hip shift, those are very important if you're having trouble getting this. Now, the, this exercise looks like a clamshell when we do the fourth progression here. I'm gonna turn back just slightly so you can see me a little bit more. Um, same idea, all those steps we just did, we're gonna redo. So exhale, belly button comes back. We hike the left ab up, right knee pushes forward. And now from here, we don't lose any of this and we pick the right knee up and we're just going to hold there. Five breaths, just like before. Now, if you feel some inner thigh, just try to put the tension on the glute, put the tension on the outer hip. Sometimes on the first set, it still feels pretty stiff, doesn't feel quite right. But as you do two or three or four or five of them, the inner thigh and the left outer hip start to loosen up and they let your right glute turn on. That's why those muscles also promote right glute activation. Two more. Now it's really easy as you relax to start letting the knee fall back. We're not going to let that happen. <sighs> nice. Okay. So those are our four progressions. Uh, just to go through them really quickly one more time. We've got progression number one, level one, uh, laying on the right side, left knee just shifts back. Progression number two, Left, laying on the right side, left knee shifts back and the right knee pushes down into the ground. Just adds some complexity to it. Number three, we come over, we lay on the left side and we just shift the hips. Right knee comes ahead of the left one. And then progression number four looks more like a clamshell. We still do the hip shift, 
but then we open the top knee up. Now, where people mess this up is they're trying too hard. If you try too hard, you put too much muscle activity in and you can't get the inhibition that you need. Uh, so don't try too hard. Look at this hair, that's nice, awesome. <laughs> if I try too hard, I have too much activity. Now, also, uh, especially on the fourth one, what people will do is they'll try to make it seem like they're moving more, like it feels like I'm moving more when I do this. And to a bystander, it looks like I'm moving more. But the issue is, if I don't keep the hip shift as I pick the, the knee up, I'm moving more in general, but less where I need to be. Remember, I said the right glute is long. We need to shorten it. If I do this, I keep it long. My knee comes out and it looks like I'm doing this thing, but I don't get the activity that I'm looking for. And I don't shut off, especially the left glute and the right inner thigh. So that's the biggest thing that people mess this up. Uh, I get a lot of questions on where should my knees be. People tend to keep them a little too low. You can still kind of get it. It's just harder to picture how to do the exercise correctly. So I like to say about 90, maybe like 95 degrees of knee bend and hip bend up. And then I just hang on to that. It helps you tuck your hips as well when you do it that way. So that's usually my recommendation, but just make sure that you're keeping the activity on the glute or on that left inner thigh. Make sure everything else stays relaxed and just be, be really slow and deliberate about your movements because the reason you need to do this is because your body doesn't want to do this. So even though it's you know not super complex, it is kind of a brain exercise. Um, and you'll get better at it as you, um, you know, train those patterns and those muscles like to be active. So that is the left side lying, right glute max progression.